place called Mahanaim. A place called Mahanaim. And that word means double count. Double count. A place called Mahanaim. Jacob had... Jacob was a trickster, and that's what his name meant. How many of you know that's what his, what his name was? Oh, his brother Esau's birthright. He was always trying to get ahead, get ahead, get ahead. You know anybody like that. We'll just do anybody wrong to be first. Just get ahead. Just get something the best way I can get it. All I want is that, and I'm going after it, and I don't care if it is my brother or my daddy or my whoever. I want it. And this was, this was Jacob's character. And this is who he was, and this is what his name meant. And so he found himself, after years and years, a whole life living. Can I speak to somebody today? I don't care how old you are. If you still hear, Jesus ain't done. Right. Amen? <laughs> Theologians believe that Jacob was 97 years old when this happened. This place called Mahanaim, 97 years old. But he had fled, he was on the run, and he had fled his home city, his own hometown, running from his brother Esau. He thought Esau would kill him if he ever saw him again because he stole his birthright. He tricked his daddy to thinking that because his, his dad was blind and he couldn't see, and, and he tricked him, and he got the blessing that should have belong, belonged to Esau. And he tricked him. So I want you to keep that in mind. He presented himself as somebody that he was not. So keep that in mind this morning as we talk about a place called Mahanaim. He had to flee and he was on the run. They had not spoken in years, a whole lifetime. In years they had not spoken. Then at a low place in Jacob's life, how many of you know, if you run and God will bring you low. Amen. He will get your attention and he will bring you low. You're looking at somebody that can say amen. He will do that. And so at a low place in Jacob's life, I'm just bringing you up to where we are. God spoke and he said, go see Esau. He spent all these years avoiding. See, people who do people wrong avoid. And sometimes they're sorry for what they did, but they won't go back because they're they, they're too cowardly to face what they did. Amen? Have you, has anybody ever been there? I have. Ashamed of what you did. And he was ashamed and he was scared. How many of you know running is not a characteristic of God? It's not a characteristic of God. He will always require us to face our challenges head on. Always. Always. Let's go to Genesis 32. And Jacob went on his way. He was on his way to go do what God said do. And the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. Hallelujah. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And that name means double camp. Double camp. You may be seated this morning. 97 years old and he sets out on his way. But while he was on his way in obedience to God, the angels of God met him. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you love to be camped out? with angels of God. When, when Jacob started on his way and he reached this place, he looked and he said, somebody's already camped here. And he looked and he said, it's God's host. Can I tell you, when you be obedient to God, when you obey the Spirit of God, God will always meet you there. He will always meet you there. Don't worry about what am I going to do, what am I going to say, how am I going to do this, whatever. Because as soon as Jacob started on his journey and he got to a place where he thought, well, we can stay here for the night, he looked and he said, it's God's host. They're already camped out waiting on me. Hallelujah. 
Jacob had no idea how this was going to change his life. Can I tell you something? He could not face Esau as Jacob. He could not face Esau, the same man who did him wrong. He could not go, and God met him while he was on his way. Hallelujah. This is good, y'all. And in studying Mahanaim, I found this out, that it was also the place where David ran when he was running from Absalom, his son. It was a place where he got a military strategy together to go against him and defeat him because he sought to kill him. It was that place. It was at Mahanaim that he gathered forces together. It was a place where God would meet and say, this is going to change and this is the strategy. We're going ahead. It's time to move. It's time to do something. But you can't go into this the same way that you left it. You're going to have to come to it a different person. You're going to have to come a different way because all you've ever known was tricking and stealing and conniving and deceiving and doing all these other things and it's not going to work. This is the end of the road. I beat you to the camp. Now some things about to change. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, thank God for change. Woo, thank God for change. Amen. This is a place where both Jacob and David put together their battle strategies. Trouble had driven them both to this place. They were both on the run. But for Jacob, this changed his life forever. Forever. It's during this time that he wrestled with the angel overnight. Let's go to verse number 24. Did I give you that? I'm not sure if I did. Yes. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said, let me go. For the day breaks. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, I want to stop right here just a second. See, Jacob was used to just telling folks what to do. Jacob was used to, oh, I can take care of that. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just pull this trick or I'll do this or I'll, I'll deceive him by this or this or that. And so he thinks he's going to do this angel the same way. He said, uh-uh, I'm not going to turn you loose. I'm going to do you like I did my brother. I'm going to hold on to you until I get the blessing. I want the blessing and I'm not turning you loose. I'm going to take it. You're going to give it to me. I'm going to take it. He had been used to living his whole life this way. And he's holding on and the angel says, turn me loose. And you think, why would the angel of God or, or Jesus Christ incarnate wrestle with him? Because God will meet you where you are. You like to wrestle Jacob? Come on. You like to trick Jacob? Come on. You like to deceive? Come on, because we got to confront a few things. Before you confront your past, we're going to confront the present. We're going to change something here, right here, right here, right now. Some folks trying to go forward, but they can't go forward because they're still who they used to be. Amen. No change has taken place. Can I tell you, when God gets through changing you, you will be changed. Hallelujah. Nobody around you is going to see you the same way. They're going to know that something is different with you. Amen. He said, let me go. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. Verse number 27. And he said unto him, what's your name? Isn't it something that God has wrestled all night long and he's let Jacob wrestle and wrestle and wrestle and wrestle and wrestle. He says, I won't let you go till you bless me. He says, okay, what's your name? Because in biblical days, names meant something. And his name meant trickster, deceiver. He said, tell me what your name is. 
In other words, admit to me who you are. Admit to me who you are. Tell me who you are. Tell me about your past. Tell me what your mama and your daddy called you. Tell me what the people around you see when they look at you. Tell me. Bring all of that because I want to do something right here. Bring all of that. Bring all of what everybody else calls you and how everybody else knows you. And here I am, God, and I know it all, but I want you to tell me. See, we can't get help unless we say we need help. We can't get help if we always want to act like we got it all together. But there's one who knows, and if you want to wrestle, he'll stay with you all night. He'll stay with you for years. He'll stay with you here and stay with you there. And he'll all the time say, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall no be no more Jacob. It shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel. Israel means prince with God. Boy, talk about a change from deceiver to prince, from trickster to prince with God. God said, When you made the choice to obey me and you turned around to go back and face, your brother. I sent my host to camp out with you. And I purpose to meet you. And we got some business to do before you go see your brother. Because he don't want to see the trickster. He don't want to see who you was. Hallelujah. We got some business to handle. For as a prince... Thou hast power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And he blessed him there. He wanted to give him a new identity. Because see, not only did it affect the way that other people around him saw him, but it also affected the way that he felt about himself. He was ashamed of what he had done to his brother. He was ashamed. How do I know? Because God, God will not ask you to do something that you're not ready to do. I believe probably for years of his life he lived with regret and shame. How many of you know regret is a hard thing to live with? It will kill you. And when God said go, we didn't read all the scripture. Oh, he was up all night long, sent his wife and his children, his cattle, everything he had on across the brook and he stayed back. And wrestled with God. But he changed his name. In this place called Mahanaim. See if we try to confront issues as the old man. There can't be healing and restoration. If we haven't been changed there can't be healing. There can't be restoration. Hallelujah. But if we camp out with God for a while. Hallelujah. Spend some time wrestling it out. Have you, don't act like you had never wrestled with God. Amen. If you've ever had issues like I've had issues, there's been some wrestling going on sometimes because sometimes God wants to require us to do something that our flesh does not want to do. And there's going to be some wrestling going on. Hallelujah. God, it hurts. 
but I'm not going to turn you loose. It hurts, but I'm not going to turn you loose. I'm ashamed, but I won't turn you loose. I'm scared, God, but I'm not turning you loose. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm wrestling, God. I know what my past says. I know what the people around me see. I know. I know. I know, but I'm not going to turn you loose until I'm blessed. I'm blessed and highly favored of you. Nothing that I can hold on is worth costing me being blessed by God. Nothing that I can hold on to. I'm going to choose to hold on to you. Yes, it hurts. Yes, I'm scared. Yes, I'm ashamed. But I won't turn you loose. I'm going to camp out with you, God. I'm we just going to sit here. Have you ever have you ever uh, 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 sat down with somebody and you didn't really even know what to say to one another and you sit there and look at each other? Have you ever felt like you did that with God? Don't even know what to say. That's where Jacob was. Don't even know what to say, God. I've made the awfulest mess. And I don't even know if you're still working for me, God, because. And then when he began to wrestle, he knew that he had a hold of something. He knew that he had a hold of something. Have you ever known you've been wrestling? Have you ever been in prayer? And all of a sudden you feel saying you know you got a hold of something. I ain't, it ain't all fixed yet. I ain't real clear. It's not all crystal clear yet. But I know I got a hold of something, Brother Anthony. I got a hold of something. I can feel it down in my body. Jacob knew and he said, uh-uh, I'm not turning you loose. I want this blessing. I, my father's blessing, my earthly father's blessing can't touch this kind of blessing. You've met me at a low place. You met me at a place where nobody else was and I'm ashamed, but I'm not turning you loose. And God met him there and said, you've stolen everything else. Everything you've had, you've got by tricking and stealing. But this is one thing that you can't just take. And he said, all I want you to do is bring me who you are. And he changed his identity. So God restored the relationship. Between him and Esau. I, I want to encourage you to go read that this afternoon. Go read it. Go read the story. How when Esau met him, oh, Jacob was ready to give him everything. He was trying to pay him to keep him from killing him. I mean, he knew he had done him so wrong. He was trying to give him wives and, and herds and, and money and all this food and all this kind of stuff. And Esau was just looking at him. He didn't know. Can I tell you something? When God's working on you, he's working on the other end too. Hallelujah. He was working on Esau. And Esau said, man, I don't need nothing you got. God has blessed me in spite of you. Hallelujah. I don't need nothing you got. Can I tell you, somebody today, you feel like somebody's always ahead of you, but if you'll camp out with God for a while, he will put something in you and bless you in such a way that you're going to say, I don't need nothing anybody else's got. What I want is I want the blessings of God. The favor of God in your life. Hallelujah. He's favor. He's food on the table when there ain't no money. Hallelujah. He's peace at night when everything else is falling all to pieces. He is everything that we need. And Jacob said, I'm not turning this loose. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to stay it out. I've run and I've done all this kind of stuff. I'm not running no more. I'm here for the duration. Hallelujah. One day when the Lord came into my heart, I said, I'm not running no more. I'm here for the duration, Lord. I'm going to hold on till you bless me. I ain't seen nothing change yet, but I'm holding on till you bless me. Hallelujah. He wants to give you a new identity hallelujah and I began to think about this about being camped out with God and I think about another camp we're going to close in just a minute when the children of Israel 
were about to take down the walls of Jericho. And they count. Hallelujah. And the Lord gave them instruction. We won't read all of those scriptures for time's sake. But I do want to go to Joshua 6 and 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up. Because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall come past the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Hallelujah. We know that when they camped out, they had to stay. And for six days, they did the same old thing. We're talking about camped out at a place called Mahanaim. Double camp. I believe they was double camped right there at Jericho. I believe that God was camped out with them. Amen. They were camped out with God. And when they, on the seventh day, the seventh time around, it wasn't the shout, hallelujah, that took it down. It wasn't the horn blowing that took it down. You know what it was? It was that they made up their mind to start camping out with God. And they stayed the first day and the first night. And the, and the word said that God forbid them to even speak. You know why? Because their mouth kept getting them in so much trouble that every time they would say talking negative and doing this, he said, I'm telling you, when you camp out down there, keep your mouth shut. I can tell you sometimes God just wants us to be quiet because when circumstances are bad, we're bad to just talk about how bad it is, how negative it is. And he said, I want you to shut your mouths don't say a word. Go down there and I'm going to camp out with you. For six days, I just want you to do what I said do. Their obedience brought the walls down. He just let them shout a little. He just let them blow the horn. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what brought the walls down is that they got quiet before the Lord, they camped out with God and they obeyed what he said to do. And when you obey what God says to do, just as Jacob did, he found out he'll work everything else out for your good. I wish you'd camp out with God for a while on that thing, whatever it is, that you're trying to figure out what to do what to do what am I going to do is there something in your life you're asking God that about right now what am I going to do God I don't know what to do I don't know what to do I feel like that is a word for you this morning and he's saying I want you to camp out with me for a while I want you to quit talking to other people about it. I want you to quit talking to yourself about it. I want you to quit putting things on Facebook hoping somebody will see something and it will cause them to do this or do that. Or See, when you truly go camping, I don't like to camp. Hallelujah. I get hot. I don't like to camp. But when you truly go to camping, let me tell you something. When Jacob was camped out, there wasn't no TV. There wasn't no cell phone. There wasn't no radio. When you truly, truly go camping, and we need to keep this in mind with God. When we camp out with God, we need to leave all that stuff out. 
to be able to hear the voice of God. Because how many of you know when five or six people's talking to you all at one time, you cannot have a conversation with anybody. If there's too many folks talking and you're trying to listen to too many voices, you're going to be confused. He said, camp out with me. Get with me. And I'll give you instruction. Camp out with me at Mahanaim. And let's get a plan together. Nobody can execute it like God can. Shh. Nobody can execute it like God can. Maybe you feel like you're there now and you say, I've been talking to the Lord. I've been spending time with God. I've been trusting God. I've been talking to God. And I just am still not clear. Stay a little longer. Stay a little longer. Jacob said, I ain't turning you loose. Some of us need to quit treating him like a drive through and spend a little time. For instruction. We want the blessing, but we don't want instruction. We want the deliverance, but we don't want interference. We don't want God interfering with how we're living our life. We just want Him to make us feel better. But we got to face those things. And he wants you to face them with a new identity. Because if you face the same things that you faced all of your life and you face them as the same person, you're going to handle them the same way that you handled them before. And you're going to get the same result over and over and over. And he said, Jacob, before you go meet your brother Esau, I'm going to change your identity. And when your brother sees you, he's going to see me. He's going to see me. When you show up to handle that thing, to go back to somebody to apologize, hallelujah, to do whatever needs to be done when you go back and you have been saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you can walk straight up boldly before them and say, I'm telling you, I'm sorry for the way I've treated you. I apologize to you. I'm sorry, but I want you to know that's not who I am anymore. I am not that person. Can you imagine? And Jacob, when Esau met Jacob, he ran and fell and he kissed his brother. All these years, Satan had stolen all those years with shame and fear and regret. Don't let him do that. Don't let him do that in your life. Get with God. Let him do a work in you. No more Jesus at a distance. No more trying to be this or trying to be that or looking like this or looking like that. No more Jesus at a distance. Bring him close. Let him change your life. Let him change who you are. Mahanaim. Double count with God. And stay there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's the takeaway. Camp out with him. Stay with him. Stick with him. Read his word. Study. Hallelujah. If you can't say nothing good, like Thumper said, don't say nothing at all. Just keep your mouth shut. Hallelujah. And say, God, help me put a watch over my mouth. I'm going to camp out with him. And the number two step is march around that thing. You keep going around it. Keep your mouth shut about what anything except what God says. You say, I don't know what to do. But this right here is what we need to do with that problem. Whatever it is that we're facing, we need to say, God, 
Right here it is. Right here it is, God. I'm camped out right here with you. I'm not leaving this till I change, till something change, and I'm going to march around it and 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 I'm going to keep going around it and around it and around it by your word, by your power, by your strength until you change me and until you bring it down because he will bring it down. Hallelujah, he will. Yes, he will. Somebody needs to say, I've kept out with God. I have a new identity, amen. He's given me a proven battle strategy. He ain't telling me to do something that might work or I hope it might work, but when he tells me what to do, I can take it to the bank. It works, amen. I have marched around it. I've declared victory over it. And you might look at it and say, I don't see nothing changing. Bless God, keep your mouth shut. Don't even engage conversation like that. You say to God, I know what you said about it, Lord. I know what you said about it. Whatever you say, Lord, is how it's going to be. Hallelujah. I've declared victory already. I've declared victory already. They declared victory before they ever blew a horn or made a shout. How do I know that you'd be completely crazy to go camp out outside the wall of a city and march around it every single day for no reason whatsoever? They declared the victory. And that's what we've got to do is hold on, stay with him, do what he said do, speak what he says speak over that thing and tell the devil this wall will come down. It will because God said we need to get in his word and know what God's word said about it, not what my best friend says or my co-worker says or the, what, what I can look up on Google. Google will lead you in the ditch, let me tell you right now. You'll think you dying. Hallelujah, you can get a, you can get a, a, a your finger and start hurting and when you Google it, you're going to be dead before sundown. Something's going to be wrong. Oh, it can just go to the furthest end. Hallelujah. And some people do that spiritually. It's just all over the place. Hallelujah. But when you stick with God and get quiet... And take that word in. And listen to him and listen to his voice. You can say, devil, this wall will come down. It will. It is. And you know it is. You don't fight for nothing. And I ain't fighting for nothing. It's going to come down. It will come down. And when it does, I'm taking everything behind it. You've put it up, and I'm taking everything behind it. Everything behind it. The Word says when the walls fell flat that they went in. I love it. I love it. I love it. It said it took them three days to take all the spoil. Hallelujah. God will not only bring the wall down, but he'll give you everything behind it. Amen. He will give you everything. He took that wall down that stood between Jacob and Esau. And when he met his brother, hallelujah, he said, I don't want nothing. He had prepared to give him everything he had. He said, I don't want nothing. I want you, brother. So you get ready and tell the enemy today. Today's the day. You see this little word, man, I am. I'm camped out with God. Look here, I brought my tent. I brought my word. I'm leaving my phone at the house. Don't call me. You know where I am. I'm camped out with God. If you need me, you can get a hold of me. But I'm going to get quiet. Don't, don't think nothing. Best friend, family member, if I get quiet for a minute, if I get quiet on you for a while, because I'm trying to listen for an answer. I need an answer. And I'm going to camp out with God. Don't be bothering me about stuff. Don't send the kids out here to check on me. I'm camped out with God. I'm going to shut that bedroom door. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to get with God with this word. I'm going to see what he says about it. 
I am sick and tired. Hallelujah of people coming and they, they need, look, we love to we love to help with problems and counsel, but I am so sick and tired of God's people sitting down like they don't have a choice. Hallelujah. You better shut that thing up right here and say, all right, devil, you put a wall up, and I'm telling you right now, I got a God that specializes in bringing them down. I will prevail because I am camped out with God. Don't you worry about when. Don't you worry about how. Hallelujah. God's got the plan. You just meet him there. You just meet him there. Jacob lost all kind of sleep. Like they had a nervous breakdown and everything else. And all God wanted him to do was tell him his name. <laughs> Wrestled all night long. But you know what God knew? He had to wear him down. Whew. I ain't even got time for that this morning. He had to wear me down. A couple of times. You may be in the wearing down process. It's all right. When you get tired, you'll tell him who you are. When you get tired, you'll admit who you are and you'll admit, I need you to change my identity. Because I'm going to camp out with God. And I'm going to take everything everything. Said it took them three whole days. Three whole days. Now if you might be thinking all oh, this 15 or 20 of them, there was thousands. Thousands upon thousands of the children of Israel. And all them people walked right over that rubble and just begin taking all kind of good stuff. Look at somebody and say, there's something good on the other side of this. There's something good on the other side of this. Don't give up while you're looking at the wall. Don't give up on the march around. Don't give up on the sixth day. There's something good on the other side. It's going to take you a while to gather it all up. Hallelujah. It's going to take me some time. I'm not only going to camp out with him while I'm waiting on this side, but when I get to the other side, we're going to just stroll around and take back everything. I'm not leaving a crumb. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout to the Lord this morning and say, I won't leave a crumb. God, if you'll bring it down, I promise you I'll take everything behind it. I'll go in and I'll go in boldly and I'll snatch that out of there and I'll get it out so quick the devil will forget even what all he did take. Because when he gets through, he's going to look and say, I thought I had that. I thought I had him. <laughs> you used to. 